Let's, let's bring this scenario back. And you're just sailing along there, not changing course. And red can't go in there. There's no room. So what does he call red? Keep clear. Well, there are only a couple of. Yeah, that's a good thing. So, just to clarify, there are only there are only two things in the rule book that you need to say. The first one is if you intend to protest, you need to howl protest, and the other one is if you need room to tack. So they're the only the only three words, or only two phrases that are stated in the rule book. You don't need to call for mark room. You don't need to call for starboard to get it. There's no obligation. But in terms of safety and an enjoyable race, you, it's really worthwhile to communicate with the boats around you as to what's happening and all that sort of stuff. So if you've got an overlap for mark room and it's clear to you, then it's a great idea to just turn around and say, Bruce, you know, we're overlaps, mark room okay? Do it politely instead of Get out of there, Bruce. You know, that's just ruining everyone's day. It's unnecessary. Put four boats there together yeah. now. Put ten. <laughs> okay, let's have a look at this scenario. Green here has left enough room for blue. Blue is not going to be able to get out of that situation. So when you've got right of way and you change course, you must give room to the other boat fulfilling its obligations to keep clear. So to give it room to keep clear, if green luffs, it's got to allow room for blue to luff, but green can't force blue to crash into red. <coughs> right, so it's a daisy chain. So when you get them all wrapped up along like this, then the whole time sequence for this lured boat doing its luff increases because it's, it's got to give room to this boat and allow this boat to fulfil its obligations. What, which if is it, what if it's just tightening up, <laughs> tightening up on, on, a, on a starboard course to cross the line? He's allowed to do that, isn't he? But only it depends on where it's done. Up, yeah, we'll be right, so, the boat over, I think. Yep, so if it's, yeah. if it's back here, and there's, there's time, there's room, there's space mm -hmm. to respond promptly under the existing conditions. But you would see that as a change of course. Change of course. If he tightened up, oh, right. not like tightened up, right? Yep. Harder on the wing. Yep, that's and change of course, so changing direction. So in that process... We're just, yeah. just go one at a time, sorry. In that process, he, he, become, he puts himself in the wrong. No, you can, like from here, uh, one of the, th the things here, Adam, is you need to think about this stuff early. Mm. Sometimes it gets to a point in time when it's too late to do other things. Mm. And, and tactically, in that situation, believe it or not, you can actually slow your boat down. Yep. You don't have to be going full noise all the time. There's all sorts of ways to slow your boat down. You can actually slow your boat down keeping the same speed by sailing a further distance. You can back your, you can slow your boat down by backing your sail, luffing head to wind, lots of rudder movement will stop you. There's all sorts of ways to slow your boat. And quite often slowing your boat, even after the start, is the best way to get out of a situation, or tactically is your best scenario, which will cover going around the bottom mark. Yep. You will see that most of the time on a cooter boat start, everyone's going at either their same constant speed or trying to get to full speed and then wondering why there are all these boats around. Whereas, if you look behind you, um, let's have a look on the start line here. You know, you're like that. Blue, can, blue doesn't want you coming over the top. So it's, you know, 20 seconds to go. Blue, blue doesn't want red there. So if you start to go like that, you know, blue's quite entitled to gently luff and keep you out, which is going to force you over, you're better off to think about it, you know, back here, I don't want to be on top of them, and let the main out. Mm. Just slow down, increase the gain. Mm -hmm. um, another common scenario, red's up here, blue's underneath, blue doesn't want to be like this. Blue laughs, what does red have to do? 
Yeah, is there any other option? No. Yeah, slowing the boat. Slowing, slowing the boat might work. But, you, but the primary obligation is to keep clear. And, yeah. And look, um, if you've gotten yourself into that situation, your obligation to the other boat is to keep clear of it. And the chances are you're going to be over the line. So I would be thinking about how do I return to the line? At this point in time. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I'm thinking for it, okay, I have stuffed this up, I should not have been here, and how do I do that? Just a quick one too. Does the boat have to go around the end? No. No. Just needs to return after the after the signal goes yes. Slow down. <coughs> turn completely to the um, the pre-start side and off we go we're sailing. Just going back to that scenario really quickly. If you do end up in that situation locked out, slowing your boat up, if you do a quick bit of maths on a 400 metre long cooter boat line, five degrees of bias <laughs> is worth about 50 metres to the pin. So if you actually find that the boat is five degrees bias and you, you really want the boat, second row, slowing down second row, there, 50 metres is worth about uh, five boat lengths in a cooter boat, hmm. right? So you're only giving away one boat length versus being at that end second row or being locked out going around and losing 100 metres. So it's risk mitigation, cutting your losses. Everyone starts a race at zero and it's how you go backwards from there is how you win. <laughs> okay, so the key points to remember here, I think that we had some questions on changing course. So when you change course, you must give the other boat and your right-of-way boat, you must give the other boat room to keep clear. Room to keep clear uh, is defined and it's responding promptly in a seaman-like manner. It is not making them crash tack or crash jive. It's, it's seaman-like. And can you explain cannot luck if you've looked uh, under the barging headline there? Yeah, that was, that was this scenario. So you, you've let them in. To that point. You've, you've left room for them to go there. They are now locked with this obstruction. You cannot luff them into it. Mm. Speaking of <coughs> speaking of luffing, can boats just sit on the line luffed further down the line? Just sit here and wait. Yeah, so yeah. we see that in lasers a lot. Mm. Yeah, doing in dinghies that. you do. Yeah. yeah. Mm. The issues that you've got there with the cooter boat is your acceleration is something mm. like a laser. Mm. Um, so. <laughs> 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 the gun goes and the whole fleet will go yeah. off. Um, the other risk with doing that in a cooter boat um, is that this boat comes up here and when they come up here and they start to laugh, they've got to initially, they, they acquire right of way, so they must, this is rule 15, they must initially give you um, room to keep clear and then they start changing course and you've got to pull on your main sheet and start sailing and, and um, when we're umpiring we'll say the call will, the conversation between the umpires is um, clear, 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 overlap, initially one, two and then I talk about this one, I'm not doing anything. So I'm not, this boat here is not doing anything to keep clear and that starts to become a problem. Before the start, can two laugh above close hall? Yep. Mm. Yep, so mm. that's rule 17, which doesn't apply be, um, before the start because mm. a boat does not have a proper course before the starting mm. signal. Mm. With, with right away, and the boats are all different, some don't point this way. What, what happens when the overtaking the uh, little boat starts to try and point you up and you just can't go any further? You have to do all that you can. So, and all that you can doesn't mean you're <laughs> sailing at close hauled, all that you can is up to um, just before head to wind. They can't force you to tack. You don't need to tack to head clear, but it's, you know, in the match racing, it's head to wind. I wouldn't suggest that, you know. Like, don't, as a fleet, try and get it. <laughs> <laughs> don't, it's like, not done. Buy, buy the bar around if you do that to someone. <laughs>
It's pro probably an obvious answer to this question, but you you often hear, oh, the helm's over, you know, like the helm's over and they I can't I hear that all the time in team racing. Um, mm. they, they come up, Dave White's a great team racer. They're sitting here flogging on the side, right, sails are out. This boat here comes and laughs. This says, uh, can you go up, please? That's how I've always heard it. <laughs> 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 and then the response is, yeah, my helm's over, and the skippers put the helms up, helm over. Now, to keep clear, you must respond promptly in a seaman-like manner, which means you've got to put your sails on as well. Helm over is not enough. What about overtaking boat, though? Overtaking boat must be clear, must not it? No, that's, that's from the old rules, so that's been rewritten, so that you have a boat that is clear astern, must give way. Right. Um, overtaking is not in it. Um, where it is covered in the rules um, is that you're clear astern, and that means you'll give way boat. When you establish an overlap, the rules change and you become the lured boat. And rule 15 that I was talking about is when you acquire right of way through your actions, you must initially give the other boat room to keep clear. So what happens initially. when a boat... So that's you know, like... Sorry. A few seconds sort of thing. Right. So if you have your main out, if someone actually steers in between the boat and the main, and you can't actually pull the main in because the jib, <laughs> their jib is actually inside the main, what do you do then? That's a great example. So let me run that scenario through. The main's out like this. Downwind? No, no, no. Yep, okay. So we're going like this, the main is out like that. This boat. And it's just slow. Let's say it's stopped, main right out. This boat is keep clear, comes in here. Remember we said initially must give room to keep clear. This boat can't even luff without going bang. So I can't respond like that. Establishes that overlap like that. They start pulling in their main and you know, it's all tangled up. This, this boat has not initially given the green boat room to keep clear. Yeah. So it's a blue fault. Yeah. yeah. But what if um, green doesn't respond at all? Well, that's then their risk. Then, you know, if they don't respond at all, then the risk is on them. That's a common occurrence in this mm. week. So. Going, going back, like strategically and tactically, you're looking, you've got a guy, you've got, you know, six guys sailing in your boat. You would assign someone to look for people trying to hook you on the start line, so people coming from astern. And you'd see that scenario coming from two boat lengths before. Now, although you're in the right of way, it does you no good if you get tangled up and miss the start by 30 seconds. So once again, everyone starts at zero and you're already 30 seconds down. So you, there's, like, there's a bit of self-preservation in it all yeah. as well. Although you're in the right of way, it's not going to make you feel any better while they're doing circles and you're stuck a minute behind the start. That happens straight in the start line, Ben, and you're forced to clear, maybe go off, and you cross the line before the time goes off. In other words, you're crossing the line before the start because yep. it's forcing you to yep. do it. Course what happens yep. there in a protest? If you still say, I'm protesting against you and force me across the line before I should. No, you've got you're, right right away. Right. You're, you're on the course side. That's the whole point about this when we're talking about risk. That one there, the green, yeah, the green boat, the green boat is yeah. in a dangerous situation. Yes, and if he crosses a line and there, uh, before the uh, siren goes, yep. and if the blue is pushed across there mm. to try and clear him to get out of danger, mm. what a, what well, to keep clear, yeah. regardless of even if there's no danger, yeah. this green boat needs to keep clear of the blue boat, yeah, and it needs to go OCS. And in team racing, we're doing that all the time. That's part of the game. Yeah. yeah, generally in a fleet, you're not trying to do that to each other unless this person's being really mm. stupid to the blue boat. Yeah. Then you might get a bit of um, hey, payback, buddy. But <laughs> it shouldn't be happening. We want to keep, we just talked about tactics and strategy. This boat's at risk for just trying to sit there and get whatever it feels like because it's an important boat or something. And this boat. You mean the Commodore's on board? I'll bring up a scenario, another good way, just so that we don't get completely bogged down on this. 
There was a boat that was um, OCS recently, and a whole heap of cooter boats going around like this. It's OCS. Slowed down, came back, did its jive, off it went and probably won the race because it was out here in clear air, whilst everyone was all fighting along like that. <laughs> Oh, the crew boat here. <coughs> the boat will start from the bow sprit or the bow? Yeah, so it's the, the hull, uh, sorry, the hull, the boat, um, its crew and equipment in normal position. And the boat. Is the bow sprit the bow sprit? Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Um, normal equipment in normal yeah, position. Jibber, okay. So if, if you had a, a spinning pole, for instance, and you're going upwind um, and you tried to stick that out, um, in front of you, then that would not count. Yeah. But where, where it does change on some big boats that I've sat on, you have a spinning pole further out the boat that's not supposed to be there going upwind, but once you enter the zone, it's assumed that the spinning pole would be out going around the top mark, so it becomes part of it, the equipment in its normal position. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's probably worthwhile just talking about overlaps. So the overlap is, so we talked about the boat and its equipment. So you've got the stern of the cooter boat here, and then you've got the rudder on it. It's the 90 degrees from the aftmost position. So... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and technically, if it goes out further underneath the water, then technically, then that is where it, it starts. So overlap would be like... So it's not very straight line. So that boat is there. You want to see that bow sprit? Okay. So that's overlapped. So this coming up to a mark you're talking about? Ah, uh, this is in any any position. Yeah, yeah reaching, yeah. going anywhere. That's overlapped. Alrighty. 